Thanks for considering the views expressed in this Think Tech commentary. Who's afraid of Vladimir is the question. The Ukrainians, good for them, are not afraid. But the US and Europe seem to be visibly fearful of Putin's threats. He's got us cowed. I'm glad we're imposing sanctions, but it hasn't stopped him. The reality of Putin's invasion goes on every day and is completely and utterly unacceptable on the world stage. It is modern mass murder all over again, and we are tolerating it. Crazy like a fox. Although he may be power crazy, Putin is not crazy. Although he has this really mean grudge against the Ukrainians, at the end of the day he is realistic. He fools us with charades trying to scare us. He exploits our humanity, our morality, and threatens expanded conflict, even though he started and is continuing this ridiculous war all by himself. He knows he can't do a nuclear war or cyber war to expand the conflict. He knows Russia would be the loser. He's also faking his people out with disinformation and oppression, as he's done increasingly over the years. We should not give credence to his threats. Fear was what kept the USSR and communist Eastern Europe in a state of terror for so many years. We cannot afford to let Putin do that again, to the Ukrainians, to Eastern Europe, or anyone else. What can we do? We are the world and we have a duty to stop him. We should continue and increase the sanctions, including the sanction and sacrifice of not buying Russian oil, even if we feel the economic effects too. We should continue and increase our humanitarian aid and accept the exodus of refugees. Even if as many as 4 million people escape however, 40 million will still be left in Ukraine, subject to Putin's indiscriminate bombings. We should increase the weapons going to the Ukrainians. We should give them all the javelins and stinger missiles they want, and more. We should encourage Poland to give them the Polish MiGs. After all, in terms of preserving the world order, the Ukrainians are doing our job for us. And we should therefore be resolute about all of this. It's not enough. All this and the incredible courage of the Ukrainian people may not solve the problem. We are told the sanctions will profoundly affect Russia's economy but the sanctions haven't stopped the invasion. And now the question before the House is whether to do a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Volodymyr Zelensky and many other Ukrainians have been begging us to do this. It will hamper Putin's war crime war and will save huge numbers of Ukrainian lives, and on that alone it is an option we must seriously consider. Time is of the essence. In many ways for many people who have died or been displaced it is already too late. Ukraine has already been reduced largely to rubble. The moral choice for us is clear, courage, determination, and a no-fly zone. Let's not do Chamberlain again. That didn't work. We must show leadership, and Europe who is following us now is likely to follow us then. We, the world, cannot afford to allow this outrage to continue. Didn't we say never again to the unprovoked invasion of sovereign nations and the mass murder of innocent people? Yes, we have to work together to terminate Putin's invasion. We also have to take definitive, comprehensive immediate action. And we must be courageous, like the Ukrainians, even in the face of threats and fear. Now is the time to show our character and stop this madness. Thanks for considering the views expressed in this Think Tech commentary. Mahalo.